Welcome back to another lesson, guys. Now we have covered carbohydrate counting, the food groups, and how to adjust your rapid acting insulin based on what you're eating, and then also how to arrive at your likely ratio for your glucose control. That's for both your carbohydrates and your corrections. Now we're gonna put the whole thing together just so you can see it in practice. So you know by now probably that I like a graph if you've seen any of my um, material or drawing things out. So this is just to highlight a typical day on the left here, we have your insulin dose and your glucose levels. And on the bottom here, you have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and evening slash overnight, just to show you a typical day. Now, what we know is, we know that your background insulin is ticking away in the background here. It's giving you the 24 hour coverage. So that's your 24 hour insulin. And this is working on your liver, stopping your liver, kicking out too much glucose. Nothing to do with food, particularly. Then, if you were to eat, carbohydrate containing food, you would expect a rise in your glucose levels and that is directly proportional to how much carbohydrate you eat. Therefore, your body needs to kick out insulin or extra insulin on top of that basal rate to prevent your glucose levels going too high, which is what your rapid acting insulin is. Now we know this lasts four and a half hours. It takes 30 minutes to get going. It takes an hour to peak and it's done and dusted in four and a half hours. Okay. Now, from our carbohydrate counting sessions, what we're trying to do is give that insulin, the rapid insulin, a chance to work, which is why, as a base standard, we want people to test before their meals and before bed, because then that gives us the opportunity to see how that rapid insulin is working, because as a rule, the space between meals tends to be about four and a half, five, six hours so it just nicely maps out the day to see what's happening, what the result is. Now remember in diabetes, we work backwards. So the evening result will be influenced by the dinner dose that you took. The pre-dinner test will be influenced by the dose you took at lunch. The pre-lunch dose will be influenced by breakfast and overnight is influenced by your background insulin. So we can do those basal tests overnight to see how well your glucose control is going. Um, and you could also do a fasting test or a carbohydrate free meal to see how your basal insulin is working for you. If you're getting big swings without eating, without exercising, and it's only your basal insulin working, then it shows you you probably got too much or too little background insulin in your system. So then we can start to look at the patterns as well. So if you're always seeing a rise in your glucose levels between breakfast and lunch, and you're using a one to 10 ratio, then actually your ratio is probably not one to 10, assuming you're calculating your carbohydrates correctly. First thing, always make sure that what you assume you're calculating is actually correct. So double down on your calculations. And if that is correct, and you're seeing a rise every day, then we know breakfast ratio is probably, um, needs to be higher, okay? And we also know at breakfast, you have a lot of hormones in your body preparing you for the day. And actually you can be a bit more resistant to your insulin in the morning. And then as the day steadies out and the hormones die off, you actually become less resistant and your ratio might change. It works the other way as well. If you're always seeing a drop in your glucose levels into hypo territory, then, or even just a big drop, then you know that the ratio is probably too much unless you're given a correction and intending it to get push it down. But if you're not intending for it to drop and you're only applying a carbohydrate ratio, yeah, it might work out and push you back in the target, but you're setting yourself up for a fall because eventually if you're given too much insulin and you're getting unexpected drops, eventually you're gonna end up with a hypo. Now, one of the other key things that we want to do is make sure that this rapid insulin is given a chance to do its work. Four and a half hours. So if you're adding in extra insulin before it's even had a chance to get going, so let's say you test your glucose here after about an hour and a half, and the glucose levels are shot right up. Let's say it's, I don't know, let's put some figures. 20, this is five, this is 10, say. Then the temptation is, and something I see a lot, is someone will add another injection here. Now, obviously, you've just reset the timeline because actually, looking at that there, you've probably got about another half of the insulin before it's actually out your system. So this hasn't actually taken hold yet. This hasn't done anything. It's not in your system. It's not doing its job yet. And yet you still added in extra insulin. So that's not good because you're then gonna probably have all this kick in at the same time. And this is when we start to see big swings. And then the glucose drops, you hypo, 
and then in order to counteract the hyper you eat and you go high again so then you have to take more insulin so you drop again so you're just always chasing the glucose levels you're never on top of it so even if you do test in between and you see these rises give it time let the insulin do its job and then see where you're at before the next meal and even then if you are still high let's say you are here and let's say that's 15 then fine apply another correction dose here okay so you're gradually nudging it down throughout the day rather than trying to go for the quick win and smashing it down by adding in extra insulin and then the next day you can use that as a feedback so you know that your ratio wasn't correct here so we need to change something so we need to change the carbohydrate ratio or the correction ratio it wasn't enough to get you down so we can start to be led by the data what you don't want to do is just keep adding in extra insulin before it's even had a chance to work so as a rule we test we carb we correct we test we carb we correct test carb correct test carb correct now this correction here obviously the next thing you're probably going to do is go to sleep so you might not want to give a full correction um, just in case it pushes you into hypo territory which is fair enough but you probably don't want to be running perpetually high so if you're here before bed then yeah maybe give a bit of a correction but maybe don't go the whole hog because yeah it might you might just overshoot it and then it upsets you for the night hopefully that makes sense so far then the obvious question that comes up quite frequently is what if i snack so if you're having little snacks in between the meals should you take extra insulin now if you're eating a carbohydrate containing snack and it's a significant amount of carbohydrate then yes you can add in extra insulin to accommodate that snack but don't add in a correction wait to add the correction now there's a rule in diabetes that if you have over 20 grams of carbs in one sitting then that's a significant amount of carbohydrates and therefore you might need to take some additional insulin so if you had an apple which is only 15 grams of carbohydrate you probably don't need to take any extra insulin because it's not going to cause a significant swing in your glucose levels some people will still want to take the insulin but let's say you're taking a 1 to 10 ratio you're probably taking one or two units it's not going to be the difference between a 5 and a 20 it might nudge you from 5 to say 7 or 8 so it's not going to be a big swing but i take it i take that point that some people are going to want to take some insulin for that but as a general rule you don't have to the only time that I would suggest that you do start to think about taking insulin if your glucose levels or, or if your carbohydrate intake is at around 20 or just below say 18 is if you have a, a low carbohydrate to insulin ratio so let's say you're using a 1 to 5 gram or a 1 to 4 gram ratio then obviously it shows us that you're quite insensitive or resistant to your insulin so Someone that's using a one to 20 ratio would only take one unit at 20 grams. So that's hardly anything. So actually they might not even need to take any insulin at 20, 25, 30 grams even. It depends on the person. Whereas someone that's using a one to five ratio, 20 grams is four units. So actually in that instance, they're probably gonna need to take something because of that insulin resistance, the body's not gonna be able to um, control the glucose levels from rising compared to their more sensitive counterpart so it does depend but as a rule if it's under 20 grams of carbohydrates no extra insulin needed for snacks if it's over 20 grams of carbohydrates then yeah you could probably take some insulin just to offset it but don't correct because obviously you may have already given a correction we'll talk a little bit about micro corrections at another lesson um, we won't go beyond the scope of that today or we won't go there today just because it's probably overload you of information so i think that's probably the basics actually so remember the first thing to do is make sure you got this basal insulin correct and there's ways to test that to see how your glucose levels are getting on which we've already covered make sure you're giving the rapid insulin a chance to work so don't over correct if you're having snacks by all means add in extra insulin to accommodate the food um, but if it's only a small insignificant amount of carbohydrate or carb free, then obviously you don't need to be taking any extra insulin. <clears throat> One question that does come up just before I sign off actually, is if you know you're gonna eat this snack, can you front load the insulin here to accommodate the snack? The answer is yes, you can. But if you do that, make sure come hell or high water, you eat that snack. Because if you don't, then obviously you've got too much insulin in your body. My preferred option but it is more injections is just take the injections as you're eating the food because you know where you stand them 
And I think that's it, guys. The board's got a bit messy there, but hopefully you understood everything there. So we'll leave it there for this lesson. Um, we're starting to build on these principles now. We're going to start to get a bit more complex in terms of what to look for with specific things uh, in terms of your glucose control and get into those more advanced strategies. But as it stands, hopefully you're following along and we will see you at the next lesson.